talk about from a personal point of view. And the first thing is that I credit my first aid to my scout troop right down here on Church of Epiphany on the Queen and Beatty Avenue, and my scoutmaster, a little guy by the name of Sarge Hayes. He stood about five foot, and he looked like the hunchback in Notre Dame. He was uh, deformed, his back and everything else. But his word was law, and up until about six or seven years ago, every scout leader of that troop has been one of his boys. And he insisted on first aid, period, to the point that his scout troop, boys, 12 to 17, won the world championship. That's the standard. Now, isn't that fabulous? So I really got my first aid in Boy Scouts. You get it in the Army, that's fine. But I credit there because it was here. So on the Anzu Beachhead, we're going to prepare to the breakout and meet the Gurkhas. <coughs> Morning parade, and my left hand says, report to the regimental surgeon. I said, may I ask why? He said, yeah, you're going to be a platoon aid man. I said, me? I'm going to pass out the side of your blood. Get your buddy over there. So I did, and I had a 20-minute lecture. 20 minutes. There was a pile of first aid equipment about halfway up that thing there, and he said, help yourself, lots of equipment. Suggest you get another bag and another bottle for water. The second water bottle is for your patients. Period. I'm sorry, but we don't have any tourniquets. Tourniquets were the thing in those days. Lots of morphine. He said, but each of you will go one-on-one -on -one with my staff to learn about morphine and the total picture of it. So that's fine. So I tell how I went up on the road, and the Italian goes on the road, hey, pipes up. The poor Italian went down the road, riding on the rims with his tires around his neck because I had the bicycle tubes for tourniquets. <laughs> Two bicycles, and I figured I had enough because they said they were coming up. Yet the first day out, we got hit. And all of a sudden, there's 20-some patients on the ground. Was it one shell? Or was it one shell hitting other mines and setting them off? But there was, I think it was 27 or 28 patients all of a sudden. Whoosh! So all of a sudden, I'm like an octopus. And I sure got my baptism. I have no idea how many people I did first aid to. I'd done everything from stuffing guts in, feet off, you name it. I did first aid on one kid and all he had left on was his shoes and his dog tags. After I stuffed in his guts and taped one the hole in his stomach, holding it in with one hand and putting the tape with my other hand and my teeth to strap it so he didn't flood his lungs. Got 100 yards from the aid station, he died, he was 18. And two of the other stretcher bears were already dead and the third, fourth one I found in the nut six months later, gone completely. So first aid is really a tough row to hold. It's really tough. And uh, I made the mistake one day because all of a sudden it's pitch black and I said, ay, ay, ay. And I could hear a three-quarter ton dodge going down the road and he's heading out into no man's land. And sure enough, he had a mine and he blew him right off the road. And I'm already going, pitch black. I found him and I could actually hear the blood. Imagine. And I made the mistake and I said, I can't stop the flow of blood.